Hey guys, um, excuse my voice today. I have a I have a flu, <laughs> so um, I'm I'm gonna keep this quick. Thank you so much for joining us for episode thirteen. I really hope you enjoy it for the moments that it's not a complete and utter disaster. Um, <laughs> we uh, regarding Story Smith's news, we will be officially releasing the first episode on. I should know this, but I didn't check it. We will be recording the first episode on the 25th of August. And so the first one will be released on the 1st of September. That's a nice, easy number to remember. I should have remembered 1st of September. (laughs) So until then, we would really appreciate it if you could go check out www.storysmithspodcast.com or go on our Twitter, which is at StorySmithsCast, which is at S-T-O-R-Y-S-M-I-T-H-S-C-A-S-T. Again, at S-T-O-R-Y-S-M-I-T-H-S-C-A-S-T, at StorySmithsCast. Go on that Twitter account and um, let us know any ideas you have for the upcoming season. We'll be taking any ideas, so just shoot your suggestions for worlds you'd like us to discuss. They could be fictional or could they could be IPs that already exist or anything from your imagination or something you've read last week or when you were a kid or something you've been thinking about reading and the twist you want to put on that world. And you never know, yours might get selected. So um, go check it out on our Twitter account and just uh, tweet at us or um, go onto our website and let us know over there. Um, I won't take up any more time. Here we go, Tabletop Sessions, episode 13. No, no, let's go. All right. right. I'm going to trade you two sheep for that wood. Tell me, honey, does that sound good? Because all I really want to do is take away longest road from you, yeah. Welcome to these tabletop sessions. Welcome to the welcome to the welcome to these tabletop sessions. Hello, fellow gregarious geeks and gamers. Welcome to the thirteenth episode of the Tabletop Sessions podcast, where we talk about all things tabletop related that have been occupying the hearts and minds of this international group of gamers over the course of the last two weeks. My name is Elias. And with me this week, it's the OG crew. They're all back like a bad rash that won't quit. It's Dima, Ipo, and Byron. Hi, guys. Dima here. No Kakawa from Ipo. Hello. Uh, I guess I'm Byron. Uh, Okay. No Kakawa, you would think it means hello in the native Aztec language. But no, it means my chocolate. (laughs) (laughs) Because I googled it and I couldn't find how to say hello, <laughs> but at least we know how to say my chocolate. The in next ancient best thing. Aztec. I think we can all say we've learned something already, and therefore this podcast has value. Do we have new ancient Aztec followers? Yes, we do. <laughs> they're um, they're all fans of uh, no no one likes Zulkin because it's mine calendar. No, there are still people that uh, <laughs> are speaking native Aztec in the mountains. I guess. As you all know, we had a Tabletop Sessions convention not too long ago. Uh, We were supposed to talk about it on the last episode. Unfortunately, everyone was too busy to be on the podcast, so I had to bring in my my backup crew, the Story Smiths. I think they did a phenomenal job. Shout out to the Story Smiths. Woohoo, shout out. Really, thank you guys for stepping in. You saved our our butts. Um, Thank you, guys. And uh, But now, uh, three of us were at TTSCon, and we thought we'd recap it for you guys. The only one that wasn't there was Byron. So um, Byron is going to play the part of the interactive audience tonight. Um, So if you have a problem, talk, speak to your representative. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what to say. Okay. I'm speechless. It's been too long with you. (laughs) Why don't we go ahead? Why don't you kick us off, Ipo, with yes. something that happened at TTS? Con. Yes, the very first thing that happened in the TTS con was that we found this amazing place, the super quiet place. Oh yeah, and <laughs> for those who don't know what it is, why don't you tell us what TTS con is? Yes, the TTS con is a weekend, or should I say, twenty-four 
hours marathon where we play games, we play games, we eat, we play games again, and we eat again. Well, it's a marathon if you stay up, Ipo. No comments. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't know. He I, didn't stay up. So I guess I guess he didn't take part in the marathon. I just slept for one hour. Oh. I don't know. I, I didn't like even it was sleep. One I hour too much. Close my eyes. <laughs> well, I was dreaming. Was beautiful blanket. <laughs> <laughs> there is a picture uh, <laughs> out somewhere. On Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Anyway, so in this uh, con, the very first thing we did is we played Spirit Island, the game published by Greater Than Games in 2017. It was designed by Eric Reus. And uh, I, it, it's the game that I spent uh, three days in London trying to buy it, and I couldn't find it anywhere because apparently there are no board gaming shops that are selling games anymore. Everybody's going to Amazon or whatever. And really? <laughs> That's a complete falsehood, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, I couldn't find them. I'm, I'm telling you, in the whole London. I mean, you're, I think that just means it's popular and out of print. A, you're in Metropolis. It was, I don't think it was out of print. Maybe the European distributors. Maybe. Mm. Mm. Maybe. <laughs> so this is a co-op game where the gods... We are the gods, defending an island from colonists. Every turn, players simultaneously choose a power card to play and consume their energy to do so. Then the invaders is their turn, they expand to new areas and they build settlements or towns in the areas they were already there. Each turn, you know the type of terrain the invaders are going to expand and you can react accordingly. So we played it four players and the review is I liked that I could do my own thing. I mean, <laughs> you can, of course, you, you always speak to your fellow uh, players and uh, you try to do uh, things that uh, are related to each other. But in the end, you have your own character. You are going to do your own thing. And I like that aspect of a co-op game. Sorry. Um... Did you listen to the last episode? Yes. You know, we went on for 10 minutes about how when Ipo plays co-ops. Yeah, shut out does, to he, he doesn't work. He doesn't work with the rest of the group, right? Yeah, I like that. That's and you literally game. just said, <laughs> my favorite thing about this co-op is I can do my own thing. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I understand your point. Uh, I think this is because I have played uh, co-op games with Dima and Lena. And... <laughs> Uh, they learned me to appreciate this aspect of the co-op <laughs> Take home message, don't play co-ops with Ipo. <laughs> or Dima and Lena, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, or Dima and Lena, but Sansa thinks. <laughs> you know what? If you can co-op it, you can solo it. Just play it alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now what I didn't like, I didn't like that I made so many mistakes and we still won. Okay, that was thanks to Michelle, uh, mostly. And of course, Edgio and uh, AK were, were trying hard. But I thought for my first game, if I do so many mistakes that I really can tell, I, I was telling, I, I, I could you feel mean like, like I was doing these mistakes. Wrong strategy? Or like mistakes, like you got the rules wrong? Like tactically. Oh, okay. I yeah. mean, I shouldn't play this card. I see it like five seconds after, and but it was too late because you, we were all playing the card uh, simultaneously. Okay. Anyway, so I thought it, the game shouldn't be so forgiving. But in the end, it, uh, we were playing the introductory level of the game, so maybe it makes some no, sense. No, but I agree with that. Um, Co-ops, for me, lose a certain amount of intrigue. Yeah when I win them. Mm -hmm. So my favorite co-ops are the ones that really torture me before they let me win mm -hmm. them. Um, think of the ones I like, like Robinson Crusoe, uh, Curse of the Church, uh, Adventure on the Cursed Island. Mm -hmm. um, what other co-ops do I like? <laughs> I don't know, like I played Pandemic for the yeah. first time at the convention. Yeah. And we That's played it twice. That's crazy this is your first I know. Time. We played it twice in a row. And we lost both times. And that's a good thing. And so I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this game is like exactly, so yes. hard. Byron, how do you feel about the difficulty level co-ops should have? It should be so difficult that you don't ever want to play the game. Exactly. <laughs> you you should not, like, no, like seriously, like 
Um, I think it was uh, Space Hulk, Death Angel. It's a mm-hmm. solo co- a solo or co-op game. The first three times I played it, I lost. And I was like, oh, my God, I love this game. Then I won. Then I won again. And then I didn't play it again. Yeah. Because, like, once you figure it out, you're kind of like, okay, got it. Because yeah. they're puzzles. Co-op yeah, games, exactly. more so than anything intrigue. else, are puzzles. And the solutions, even if there is a luck element, for the most part, once you can figure out how to solve it, you can figure out how to solve it. No, exactly. It's to say the difficulty of the game is like two. If your brain power is 1.5 and your friends is 1.5, you already beat the difficulty. It it, it has to scale up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But again, to be fair to the game, we were just playing the introductory game, so it was easier than but the normal game. But you played it for like three hours. More. Yeah, so the it second thing... Insane. Exactly. The second thing I didn't like <laughs> was that it took so long. Because after two hours, we were ready to surrender. <laughs> and then we flipped the end game card only to discover that we had one more chance. And this one more chance was two more hours of play. <laughs> <laughs> and you wanted to kill yourself. <laughs> the good thing is, was that in between these two couple of hours, two parts of two, two hours, we had these amazing tacos. Oh, <laughs> so good. Best tacos ever. Tacos are so good. But in the second part of the game, I was really exhausted. I, I think we shouldn't have this part. I mean, the first two hours were amazing. I had fun. I liked the game. Uh, but I felt it should um, end in this end of two, the first uh, part. Yeah. I'd still really like to try it. Um, partially because of what you said that you can do your own thing. Mm-hmm. So nobody can really tell me what to do. Um, but um, I think I'd like to pick who I play with. So mm-hmm. like someone like Byron would be good because he'd mm-hmm. be fast. Yeah. And we could move on with our lives. Yeah. Because that, that game was <laughs> insanely long. Yeah. I don't know if you want to say something about our group. <laughs> no, we have, we have about half the group, which are ridiculously slow players. Every time anything, like any time limit is on BGG, I double it for our group. Yeah. Well, depends who's playing yeah. you know what i mean like yeah if it's if it's certain group i can say okay it'll be within this time frame yeah. but for about half the people if one of them is in your group double it that's mm-hmm. how i say so well, unfortunately I'm, that's i'm one of those people you're one of those people yeah. but if a game is like me byron um i don't know who sergio else. serge yeah Chez. yeah some, yeah something like that it goes super fast we're the quickest guns in the west <laughs> Lastly, I really liked that there are scenarios of real historical invasions, actually <laughs> colonizations, where you can play against the British or the Swedish. For yeah, some it's <laughs> super accurate when the uh, British fought the huge rock monster <laughs> in the uh, Malvinas. <laughs> there, there wasn't any rock They monster. still That's sing those songs. They colonized the whole world. <laughs> but uh, uh, it seems like... Interesting. Well, thank you for that, Ipo. So that was your play of Spirit Island. Everything should be with a grain of salt that it was your one-time play of this game. Uh, (laughs) But you have piqued my interest a little bit. Um, So we're going to move on from Spirit Island to Oracles of Delphi. Oracle. I I love adding S's to all games. Galaxy Galaxy Truckers. Truckers. Oracles of Delphi. Oracles of Delphi's. (laughs) Delphi's. Byron, did you play this game before? Spirits Islands. (laughs) I've played this game before and won this game. Nice. Okay, so published um, by Pegasus Spiel. It was a three-way tie, Byron. Remember that? And you won. The- um, but the tiebreakers. Yeah, you won it. I'm just saying. This <laughs> game, we were four players. AK <laughs> was not part of this, but me, you, and Diego literally tied three ways. And then we had to use two tiebreakers to separate it out, okay. which is crazy. So but- our game was completely <laughs> imbalanced. Anyways, okay, let me start by saying it was designed by <laughs> Stefan Feld. And um, it's pretty simplistic. When I was reading the rules, I was like, ugh, it's just 12 tasks. Basically, Zeus organized like a competition and you have to finish these 12 tasks and it's a race, basically. It does. So um, you have oracles to help you, which are the dice. You roll the dice and then they'll tell you what you can do on your turn. And you have other gods that can help you. So you're you're going around the board, picking up stuff, building temples, um, killing monsters, and uh, basically, 
when I was reading the rules, I felt like we all have the same 12 tasks. And I'm like, this is, this looks so boring. And it's in the same order. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So um, you can actually, you can complete them in any order. But, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. But um, it's, I just felt like we're all doing the same thing. But here's the catch. At the beginning of the game, you all start with a special ability. And I honestly felt like Lena's ability was overpowered. <laughs> I'm just going to point did, out. Did she win? <laughs> I'm just, wait, okay. <laughs> she was a goddess, right? I'm just going to point that out from now. She had the ability to, like, you have like three movements across the board per turn, yeah. and she had six movements, yeah, which was a ridiculous. Yeah, AK had that. He came in dead last. Okay, well, well, Lena <laughs> used her ability really well. And um, basically, like, the gods give you special abilities throughout the game. And, you like, each player has a different strategy based on the starting ability you get. And we had a great time. Like, it was interactive. It was fast, fun. Like, I really loved it, surprisingly. And, um, yeah, Byron, how was your experience playing it? I loved it. It was such a challenge. I don't think we had a clear cut winner until the very last round. And even that, it still went to tiebreakers. Yeah. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, it didn't feel like at any point in the game I was winning until <laughs> Elias was like, okay, let's do the tiebreakers. And I see that Elias hasn't gotten over it. <laughs> no, I just, I've never had, in my whole time gaming, I've never had a three way tie. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's crazy. So your game was extremely balanced. I felt like ours. Maybe me and Shez just had no strategy. <laughs> so um, well, I remember what I enjoyed about it. I don't remember everything. Um, I remember AK saying what he loved about it was the colors. So that's one thing. <laughs> no, but he has a point. Like the matching of colors. Yeah. How everything green relates to green things. Yeah. How everything pink relates to pink things. Um, I like the race aspect of the yeah. game. Um, that's why I was surprised that yeah. there was a tie. Because it's a race. Yeah. And it's not a race yeah. like get from point A to point Z. It's get back to the origin point after completing 12 tasks. Yeah. And it's not like me, Diego, and Byron were doing the same things every turn. Mm -hmm. We each took a different route. Each of us completed different tasks in different turns. Yeah. We just so happened to finish and return to that central point at the same time. I remember I enjoyed it. I haven't played it again, um, which is a shame. But I, it, it was a lighter felt, and, and I liked it. Yeah, it was very smooth. Yeah. Like, like the actions you can take, the way everything works together, the way your cards, like your abilities build on each other. It was it was a very, very like eloquently designed game. Was it like Stefan Feld's game? It is Stefan Feld. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> but, but Ipo, I wanted to ask you what your thoughts are on the fact that it's a historical game like Spirit Island. <laughs> Actually, I was going to say that I like the fact that uh, Stefan Feld kept the um, uh, story from Greek mythology where the 12 tasks were originally given to Hercules. Hercules, yeah. And, uh, okay, so this is... Um, okay, okay, the, he just kept the, <laughs> the, the main thing of the story, but there's no Hercules here and there is a race. Uh, <laughs> and for some reason, the name of the game is Oracle of Delphi. That <laughs> But okay, you, you got my point. Because you're humans, right? So you need the well, oracle's also, help also, to achieve the tasks. The tasks. Uh, Hera? Who gave Hercules the task? No, it was a king. Uh, oh, that's right. Hera is the one that uh, cursed them. Hercules did something very bad that I She's don't She's the one remember. that made a murderous family. Yeah. Who? Hercules. He murdered his family? I think, I'm thinking about Kratos. <laughs> I, I I think yeah I think he killed his sons. He killed his son. He yeah, was son drunk was though. He was like he was drunk. God drunk. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like Hera was fucking with him. And then he realized what he did, and uh, he needed to make a coat out of lion fur. He yeah he needed to make it right, <laughs> and uh, the gods say yeah go to that guy and train. And do these 12 steps. Anyway, and, uh, if there's it's, a I think it's, third it, weight tiebreaker, you need to. It's probably in my top 50 historical games. <laughs> <laughs> I remember how much of a nightmare it was trying to track this down my first ever Essen. Oh, that's right. It was sold out yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Um, like, I remember you asked me what I was interested in for that Essen because I wasn't coming. And I just basically gave you a list of like Feld games, and that was it. <laughs> 
But yeah, it was. Um, okay, it was if, if Oracle of Delphi is one of your top fifty historical games, it's, where it's is a joke? Where is Race to the Rhine? Okay, now this game blew my freaking mind hole in a weird way. Okay, <laughs> so Race to the Rhine is a three-player game. You can play it one, two, or three, but it's a three-player game. One and two is bullshit. Okay, it's published by Phalanx Games in 2014. Same guys who did Hannibal and Hamilcar, Ipo. Um, oh. And it's designed by Yaro Andrus, An Andruskiewicz and Valdek Gumieni. And it's basically a game was, okay, the Germans at the end of World War II have um, surrendered, and um, you are basically the allied forces, so two U.S. forces, and one represents the British forces. Uh, so like Monty, Patton, and someone else. Um, Bradley, I think. And basically, you're trying to get to the Rhine, so to Berlin, basically, to take control of it before the Soviets reach it on the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a co-op. You're also trying to do it before the others do as well. Um, along the way, you will meet German convoys, strongholds of leftover German troops that are holding on to stuff. Because at the core, this is not a combat game. This is a straight-up supply logistics game. So you are trying to take a path all the way. And at the end, once you reach one of these locations at the end, at the Rhine, you have to be able to trace a path you control all the way back to your supply depot in okay. the beginning. But you're going to run out of supplies because every time you move, you're going to flip over a card, which is an event that occurs, something that you have to deal with. Could be combat, could be um, people you have to feed to get a medal, whatever it is. So, because the medal is, if no one reaches the Rhine by the end of the game, then you just count who has the most medals. So, along the way, you have to take over other supply depots. You have to send them that way. You send the trucks. To say, the theme is cool. Now, Can your supply ever run out along the way yes, and you have to refill it? It, it? it very quickly runs okay. out. It runs out like in t two steps. And, there, okay. and there's like 15 steps. Is it a three-player game? I would say three-player only, as I just said a so minute British, ago. So British, Americans, and friends? No, two Americans. So you have uh, oh. Bradley, Patton, and Montgomery. Oh, okay. Um, so the issue is I'm not 100% sure that Basil learned this game correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to that's, Basil. That's what it looked like. It looked <laughs> super sketchy. I told him to learn it and because he really wanted to play it. And we played it. And here's why. I I guess I was expecting a heavier game. It's really light. It's really okay, it's a logistics puzzle and you have to figure it out. But rules wise, there's not much to it. There's a couple of options you have. You can bring in new supplies, you can move, or you can send supplies along the supply route. Right? That's basically all you can do on your turn. Um, dealing with combat, like let's say you flip over and there's a German uh, whatever, um, you got to pay like, okay, one ammunition, one oil, and you're done with it. Okay. I just feel like that rule book looked really long. The rule book is not great, but neither was Hannibal and Hamilcar. Anyway, okay. let me just get to the point. Um, I, I think I've given this game an unfair shake because it's not what I expected it to be. Mm -hmm. But the longer it's been since I've played it, the more I see a very valuable space for it in our collection. And I'll need to play it again to, to test it. I'll need to read the rules myself, because I'm, again... I'm yeah, I wanted to say, if the rule book is long, Basil didn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason, that, the reason it fits such a nice thing is it's a race game, right? But it's kind of like Shadows over Camelot in the sense that you do something, and at the end of your turn, you have to do a bad thing, something well, that helps the Nazis. Well, then, okay. then it's really light. No, I, You're no. You're comparing I, it with Shadows over Camelot? Yeah. It's not that light. Okay. It's not that light. Um, but you're literally like, I mean, like at the end of Shadows over Camelot, at the end of each turn, you have to progress evil in some way, place a catapult. Um, lose a life, something like that mm -hmm. at the end of your turn. It's like that. At the end of the turn, you have to either place some Nazi control on the map um, or take away someone, something. I can't remember now. Um, but the point is, the game, I gave it an unfair shake because it, it sort of looks and sets up like a war game. 
even if it's a supply logistics game, because it looks like a war game, you expect it to be heavier with more historical accuracy and so on. But the more I think about it, the more I feel like I don't have race a lot of race games that I like. Um, Oracle of Delphi, yes, it's a race, but there's a lot more to it. Um, and something like uh, Northwest Passage, Expedition Northwest Passage, it's a race, but at the same time, it's... Um, I, I'm not always in the mood for this. Exactly. One. At the same time, we don't really like it. Exactly. <laughs> Dima <laughs> loves it, so it stays in the collection. But Race to the Ryan, I need to give it two, three more plays because I feel like it has potential if I approach it as a lighter game, forget the fact that it is a historical war game theme, and treat it like what it is, which is trying to build roots all the way to the end while screwing over your neighbors. I won the game simply because... Hamad and Basil just <laughs> went straight at each other's throats from the beginning. And that's one thing I fear it can fall victim to, which mm -hmm. is if two people go after each other right away, I was just, so like Hamad would screw over Basil, Basil would screw over Hamad, and I would put something that kind of screws both of them. So when I almost got to the end, because I had the longest path, so they weren't really thinking about me. When I got to the end, they were like, oh, shit. And they started to block me. But by then... It was, it too, was late. too late, and I sort of barged my way through and made it to the Rhine. But um, it's a great game, Race to the Rhine. Um, just don't expect it to be a heavier game. Treat it for what it is. It's a race game, and um, check it out. Race to the Rhine. I'll report back once I played a couple Challenge more Challenge accepted. Let's play Race to the Rhine. <laughs> sounds like a great game. Yeah, you should have seen them, Byron. <laughs> yeah, I think they we, were... we were all missold I can imagine Hamad yeah. and Basil going at each other's throats. I think the biggest problem was we all just expected something else. I liked very yeah. much the, the map. I liked the, It's beautiful. The board is beautiful. I will say I, the game I, is very pretty. And I have a thing with them, beautiful maps. I'll tell you what. We'll play it again, us three. But I will let you know ahead of time that it is not a heavy game. Okay. Yes. It's a simple race game, and then we'll we'll, we'll all report back on what we think of Race to the Rhine. It's just you should have been there to hear Basil cool. going, "Hamad, attack Elias. He's gonna win the game." And Hamad's like, "But I want to attack you." <laughs> <laughs> and he just kept attacking Basil. It was so funny. Guys, you know what didn't have a, a beautiful map? Eighteen Lilliput. Disagree. <laughs> <laughs> struck out of the podcast <laughs> it has the best map of any 18xx game okay i, I, right, I should right. say not the beautiful board because yeah you're creating a map with the cards but there's no board okay so 18 lilliput is uh, a game published by fox in the box in 2018 designed by Lonnie orgler love the publisher's name by the way <laughs> and in the box Box in the box. So 18 Lilliput is an 18, 18xx game in two hours. You can play this in two hours. And what is it an 18xx game? I hear you asking. Uh, get the fuck out of this podcast. <laughs> you shouldn't be here. What the fuck? You should know what is an 18xx game by this time if you have listened to all our episodes, but... Okay, it's a, a financial game where you're trying to establish train routes in uh, USA usually, but in this uh, case, in uh, Lil... What's the name of the Lilliput town? Lilliput. Really? Yeah. <laughs> in Lilliput. Okay, so it's uh, for everybody that have played the N18XX game, it's really what everybody was looking for. It's... It gives you all these amazing stuff of an 18xx game, uh, which is uh, stock manipulation and uh, making your own routes and uh, at the same time uh, uh, mingling with the other players and trying to cut them off from the most prosperous uh, routes. Mm -hmm. uh, I liked very much the fact that they replace the private companies that take so much time for every 18xx game with characters with special abilities. 
Uh, in each round of the game, you take. Oh action. yeah! Yeah. I didn't realize what they were replacing. Yeah. I thought he, they just gave us characters, but yeah, you're right. They replace private companies. Yeah. And almost oh, exactly. Okay. Like one of them gives you the water, one of them. Oh, wow. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> so, in every turn of the game, you take actions from a common pool. Uh, so, not all of the actions are available all the time. So, you can lay track, you can upgrade uh, your track, you can buy shares, you can start a new company. And then in each round, you run your trains. And in the end, you can keep your income or pay the shareholders so it's it's an 18xx game i don't know what else to say i love i like it very much it's the first time that i'm really waiting for an expansion uh because i feel this game has potential and i feel that uh, they can make it even shorter because this calculating part of the game is still there and it bothers me. Did it matter? Wasn't Elias doing all the calculations anyway? No, um, I was counting for other people, but in the end, Were you counting flowers? people did some amazing mathematics to get us to score. It was very impressive. Oh. And I think the next time we play, yeah. I'm not going to use the cash. I'm going to have Ipo do an Excel sheet. Because, oh, like he did like with Ipo. Because I was really 46. impressed with how much faster it was but the problem is trusting him. But the game gives you the, the <laughs> notepads. You can use the notepads. And I know, but none of us can do same. it. You're the yeah. only one. That, I still don't know how you calculate oh, the exactly. score. Exactly. Okay. Me too. I will say something about um, 18 Lilliput. I bought it on the spot in Essen because I thought I kind of thought it was bigger. So I was like, I'm going to test it first. But they weren't. They didn't have any playtesting tables. Mm -hmm. And I saw that it was a small box. Mm -hmm. It was heavy, but it was a small box. So I immediately bought it. Um... I don't regret it one bit because you look at it and it's got cartoonish art and there's no board and blah, blah, blah. And the, the stock track is super simplistic. And you're like, how could this be an 18xx game? This is very watered down. But everything you look for is there, as Ipo says. There, there's the track building, track upgrading. There's the special powers, which are the private companies, that, which I just found out. There's <laughs> stock manipulation. What I wish we did more was mess around a bit more with the stock track because I think I won the game mostly because my stock was valuable, more valuable from the beginning and nobody ever sold my stock. So it never reduced the value of my stock. And I had the most of my stock. So I, I really, I really liked it. And what was amazing about it is we played it in two hours and I taught it in half an hour. Yeah. And I've just never seen that. So like, I feel like I could teach this game on game night, half an hour, play for two hours. And then exactly. Yeah. You want to play 1846? Well, it'll only take me 20 minutes to teach you the differences. You know what I mean? And then we're done with 1846. I'll teach you 1830. It'll only take me 30 minutes to explain the differences. So it's like, it's the perfect in step. 1846 is still a big step for people that have never played 18xx games. All right? Exactly. So guys, go for it. All, the, all you guys that uh, don't know 18xx games. That's a great entry that. point. Agreed. 18 Lilliput. Highly recommended. Awesome. So to keep us awake... At around midnight, we played. It was way later than that. Was it? Yeah. Was it like 2, 3 in the morning? It was about 2, 30. Yeah. yeah. So we played The Extraordinary Adventures of Baron Munchausen. Did you so, or are you lying? <laughs> <laughs> so the, it was first published in 98, but we used the Fantasy Flight version published in 2016, designed by James Wallace. And I want to say, like the game itself is very simplistic. Like the rules fit on half a page. Yeah. But the book that Fantasy Flight gives you is so beautiful. I mean, there's so much Very content. Very rich. So much frivolous stuff just to read <laughs> and to enjoy. I cannot recommend that thing. And it's not expensive. It's less than $20. Like, gorgeous. Gotta pick that like, up. Like, I think we played the game for 45 minutes and I laughed for the whole 45 minutes. It was really It fun. was so fun. Um, if you're playing with people that like storytelling and like... I think Byron might like BSing this BSing through life. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually quite jealous I didn't get to play this one. Yeah, I, th I think you would have loved it. So basically, um, we were six people. Each person on their turn tells a story based on a premise chaise. Um, got Elias to pick the premise. So basically, everyone was had these weird and funny accents that were from nowhere land. Well, <laughs> it's, it's more like 18th century... Um, 
bohemian German accent. Yeah, you know? I can't do the <laughs> accent. <laughs> but basically, Elia started by telling Shez, tell us the story of when you convinced the Duchess of Holland to get married in a pigsty. <laughs> that was terrible. This, this game could be a but, podcast, eh? Oh, well, we're doing it on stories, man. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I so basically, that was the about it. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine all the strange sequence of events that he had to come up with to get to that ending. And throughout his story, basically. Sorry, my favorite part is like, so we flew <laughs> from Amsterdam to England and we're like, how, how, how did you fly? And he's like, with a new invention called uh, an aeromobile or something like that. And they're like, oh, and where did you land? He's like, at this remote location <laughs> called Gatwick. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny. That and like, so she, basically, <laughs> while Shez was telling the story, we each have a bunch of chits in our hand. And you can give him a chit and make a suggestion to his story. And the poor guy went through like 15 minutes and finally made it to the end where they got married in a pigsty. <laughs> And AK goes, but how did you get her to do it in a pigsty? Because I distinctly remember she was Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> and basically at that point, Shez can either add the chit and refuse to incorporate Just AK's suggestion like, in the story. I believe you are making things up and have drunk too much absinthe, my dears. <laughs> <laughs> or he can take the chit and incorporate it into the story. <laughs> and I think that one he rejected. I think he was No, done. he brought it in. Did he? he? did an amazing job. But you, you kind of give it back and forth. So yeah. let's say you th throw in something that's really tough that he can't. Like at one point when he got to the end of his story, I was like, that's not possible because the princess of Holland is my cousin and she's she's married to my um se my my cousin of my second blah 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 who uh you know where they were married 20 years ago and then he didn't want to change everything so he's like I'm pretty sure your cousin is a liar and he puts another <laughs> chip then I go no I mean he's not the most you know honorable of 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 rogues but he wouldn't lie about this and I so the pot gets bigger and bigger and bigger and the end it was about six chips and then he was like pretty sure your cousin is a liar and I was like you're right he's a bloody liar <laughs> and I took all the six chips so at some point the, the pot becomes too big that you know you want to take the whole pot, yeah. you know? So you either incorporate it in your story or you admit that, you know, you're full of shit. Yeah. So. so very suggested if you just want to have a night of Sounds amazing. messing around and storytelling and just like coming up with weird garbage. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. I don't need to listen to your lies. <laughs> and that was <laughs> The Extraordinary Adventures of Baron Munchausen by James Wallace. Awesome. Thank you, Dima. Along with all those wonderful games that you guys talked about, thank you so much. Byron, we also got to play Mombasa again, which I, I love Mombasa. Viticulture, Age of Steam, Ooh, Pandemic, which Dima mentioned. Space Hulk, Death Angel, Trap Words, Noria, Kitchen Rush, Arboretum, Rhino Hero Super Battle, Sponsio, Shipwreck Arcana, and more. I mean, what a crazy pack 24 hours. And for those of us that stayed up the whole 24 hours, Dima, high five. Shout out to the winners. Damn, well, yeah. Um, <laughs> we won, okay? I freaking stayed up 24 hours. I won. Um, we, we had a terrific time, and it was really a nice collection of games. Guys, you know what's even more exciting than talking about TTSCon? What? The game show of the week, baby. Oh, I was this is one place the other group is much better than you guys. Uh, they, <laughs> their cheering was top notch. I was going to say the okay, Hippocratic Okay, okay, try it again. Try it again. Try, yeah, try it again. Try it again. Try it again. I'll, right. I'll come up We're ready. Some. Guys, you know what's better than uh, t talking about TTSCon? What? 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 The Game Show of the Week, yeah! baby! Yeah! 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 So, did we beat him? Did we beat the other guys? <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> I heard you had a good time I heard you had a blast And so I played that one card And listened to you whine 
Okay, so welcome to I heard you had a good time. One time. <laughs> okay, so this is I heard you had a good time. Basically, Ipo, Elias, and I are each going to pick two quotes or incidents that occurred during TTSCon. We're each going to tell Byron the incident or the statements, and he needs to guess what game it's from. If Byron gets it right, one point for Byron. If Byron gets it wrong, two points for me, Ipo, or Elias. But if Byron gets all six wrong, zero points for everyone, and we just wasted our listeners' time. Woohoo! <laughs> so you're, so you're, to you're gonna be part of this one, Dima? <laughs> yeah! I'm so excited! Dima, Dima could win a competition. Okay, Byron. At, uh, some, yeah. at some point in TTS Corn, Dima said, Elias, please stop manipulating the other players against me. This is not a fucking co op! <laughs> During what game this incident occur? I'm gonna guess that it is Age of Steam. Uh -uh. <laughs> Should I make the? No, I, I didn't post. <laughs> that was actually the game you gave us, my friend, uh, Sponsor. Spons. That was and, my first guess. Fuck. Oh, and Dima yeah. was so pissy because you know she's really good at it, right? <laughs> Uh, I know, that's why that's I was like, it can't be Sponsio. I actually said, this is not an effing co-op, it's a trick-taking game. <laughs> <laughs> and Ipo was watching silently. <laughs> All right, so Dima, you want to go next? Yeah, sure. So, I was playing a game with Basil and AK, and throughout the game, I kept telling Basil, I don't understand your strategy. What I usually do is this. And then I proceed to show him on every turn why I'm discarding that card. What, I, what it means for him, for me. Then I proceed to lose the game. <laughs> <laughs> is this Deus? No. This isn't on the list. <laughs> you want to try again with the game on the list? On the list, okay. Um, then it would be Mombasa. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was Arboretum. Oh, uh, uh, it's a card game. I should have known that. Mm. Okay, Elias, you're up. All right. So, Basil is at the snack table. So, Hamad okay. takes the opportunity to point at the board and say, we need to make sure this isn't so valuable because Basil is the only one who benefits from it. Harriet then casually stands up walks over to Basil at the snack table and whispers in his ear exactly what Hamad just said. <laughs> Is that Race for the Rhyme? No! Oh. That, that's a three-player game. But it is Mombasa. Okay. okay you know what? Uh, Byron, I've had enough of this now. Byron, you could still win. You just, <laughs> need to get the, you just need to get the next three right. Okay. <laughs> so, Byron. It is five o'clock in the morning. And Elias is starting to fall asleep. Nice. Lena alone is trying to get his attention. After many suggestions from Lena, what was the game that Elias was convinced to play? I'm going to say the, the Lilliput. 18x Lilliput. Close. <laughs> Close. It was the before last game. Actually, this is a hard question. That was really <laughs> hard say, and big. No, why would I play 18 Lilliput when I'm sleepy? Yeah. But who would play... You've done Stranger Things. <laughs> Ryan a hero super battle while, <laughs> while he was ready to... She sleep. literally went through every game on the shelf. And I was like, no, Lena, I don't want to play games. So sleepy. And then she points to Rhino here and I'm like, uh, yeah. Let's, let's play that. <laughs> that was so strange. <laughs> All right, Dima, you're okay. next. Okay, so... At the end of the convention... Everyone's done packing. We all want to take a group picture before some of us head out. And Elias, Ipo, Lena, and I can't remember who the Hamad. fourth person is. Hamad are playing a game and they're trying to finish it. So as Elias is about to tell Lena how much money she earned, we all say cheese and stand around <laughs> and someone takes a picture. And Elias is just holding his breath to tell Lena 
as soon as the picture is taken, he looks at her and goes, Lena, get 25 pounds. And then, <laughs> and that's the picture of Elias with the grumpy face. <laughs> Actually, I'm about. I said that that's 18 lily put. Ding, ding, ding! Oh, good job. Uh, All right, one ride. I'm changing the rules. I mean, is losing. I'm giving you two points for that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so the last one. Yeah. It's 6 a.m., nearly 24 hours awake. Lena gives me an evil stare and yells, Get off my level! That would be trap words. I'd be rhino <laughs> hero, motherfucker! <laughs> Why are the two rhino hero stories? <laughs> because we came up with them separately and and why did it take you an hour to play rhino hero <laughs> that's a very good because point. it was 6 a.m yeah, and were, nearly oh man you should have away. seen elias he was like struggling to stay awake and he was so determined to get that badge all oh, those badges made it all worth it by the way just side note i got the badge for most lost games Woohoo! Yeah. and my two losses yeah. in pandemic really helped me get up there you got the badge for i'm the oldest that doesn't even How count. Do you lose a like, pandemic? He got the badge before even getting to I the made con. it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so at the end of that, Ipo has four points, Elias has four points, Dima has two points, and Byron has two points. What happens now, Dima? To answer past Elias, this is future Elias, coming to you from the editing bay. Um, at this point, what happened was about 10 minutes of discussion and s silliness trying to figure out on the fly what the tiebreaker should be because we're geniuses like that um but in the end we decided that we'd see what byron was doing that day turned out he went for a run so he checked on his app and we both predicted how far he ran or jogged that day and the closest to that was the winner let's get back to it june 14 i i went for a walk what was my distance 4.9 kilometers. Elias? One second. Ah, ah, put your phone down. Put your phone down. What, was your, what did you say? 4.9. 4.9 kilometers? 4.91. such. I went for 3.51. Oh! Yeah! Yeah! That, that's for, for playing dirty, Elias. <laughs> <laughs> So Ipo is the winner of I Heard You Had a Good Time. That's bullshit. And Elias gets second place and Byron and Dima score third. Tied for tied, third. Tied, tied. I'm insisting on this. Okay, so... I'm just cutting all this out. Wait. We tied. <laughs> Guys, so, so do, nice when do you it's hear so that? Random. Do you hear that? Uh, I think it's oh, Zeus. Oh. Yes. Yes. It sounds, it's, like, it's, it sounds like a historical... It's Oracle of Dolphy. <laughs> it sounds like... Historical documentary. I think it's yogurt from Delphi. <laughs> I thought, isn't oh, isn't uh, uh, Stephen Fultz again? Isn't Zorba the Greek historical documentary? <laughs> <laughs> it's the Hippocratic Corner. Yeah. 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 Uh, you guys failed again. You can't even do it twice in a row. Terrible. Just, just crop the first one and then paste it. <laughs> <laughs> The Hippocratic Corner is back with you after uh, so many days without you. Oh yeah, we the did fans, it without you last time. The source of our energy. In this Hippocratic Corner, we would like <laughs> our hosts to tell us the top three games to play at a con. Convention. <laughs> convention. <laughs> at a convention, yes. Okay. And uh, I would like to go first. Uh, uh, to I feel like Byron today, wanted to go first, but whatever. This episode, because I would like to say to you what I was thinking when I was saying, okay, let's find top three games to play at a convention. So my idea was I need to find something to play in a noisy environment with many available dedicated gamers dedicated Oof. yeah people that are Oof. willing to play whatever 
<laughs> with people that you don't know usually with people that usually they don't know the rules of the game they are going to play mm-hmm. so with this criteria i came up with my top three and my number three is two rooms and a boom it's a game for 30 okay. players so everybody can play it uh you can get to know people with this game and the main interaction during that game is between two players so you just go and talk with somebody and <laughs> what do you have the same no okay <laughs> <laughs> my number two is the game grand prix by jim oh that's a good pick thank you i'm i'm surprised 11 mm. players they can play and i love grand prix everybody knows it i'm the only one that's why we don't play it uh, <laughs> ever in this group <laughs> or yeah you can say never uh and my number one is advanced civilization oh go fuck yourself <laughs> oh you're lying people we can't even play it oh, now man. we're dying you are totally oh, right man. but i have a story why is my number one <laughs> because It, it was the game I played in my first convention in Greece. Like it was like 1994, something like that. And I go to this convention with uh, advanced, let's say, games that I didn't know. And they're telling me that there is this game that uh, there's no luck. And I was thinking, what do you mean there's no luck? Where's the dice? And there was no dice. How do you move on the board? Yeah, exactly. I was thinking, <laughs> well, what the fuck? What, what are they doing, these guys? I was amazed. Uh, soon enough, after a couple of rounds, the Iberian player left the game. He had somewhere to go. And I was invited. They, they told me, <laughs> okay, please come and play the Iberians. I said, yeah, let, let's do this. And I remember a pretty girl uh, sitting next to me. <gasps> she was playing the Africans. So she was my neighbor. Yes. And she's looking at me and she says... In our game right now, I'm the Iberians, Dima's the Africans. Really? Pretty girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's like a tradition. Aww. I just uh, want to say everyone from Africa is pretty. <laughs> so this lady is looking at this lady. I was like 22 years old. She was like 24 or something. Okay. So she's looking at me and she says, very seriously, you need to leave Africa right now or I'm going to destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I was not used to this kind of behavior. So I was looking at her, I was saying, okay, okay. And she recognized that I was frightened, I was terrified. I was frightened. <laughs> I was terrified by her. And she said to me, relax, it's a game. <laughs> that's good. If I may make one suggestion that's your thing, but the correct one, um, mega civilization. Because mega civilization can play 19 people. Um, to- totally correct. So if you play that at a con, you can actually play with 19 people. Yeah, but then it would take up like the whole day. Either way, it can take up the whole fucking day. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> I cannot believe we got sucked into game. this game online. No, I think it's only 12 hours. <laughs> oh, is that it? Okay. Okay. And that's my top three. Who wants to go next? Byron. Okay, I'll go next. I was hoping you'd pick me. So I have a top three, and I'm just going to tell you them. So my criteria for my top three was... <laughs> I feel like was... he's lying when he says that. <laughs> <laughs> my criteria was that they had to be light to pack, so not, not very heavy weight-wise, mm-hmm. small enough to fit in a backpack, mm-hmm. and have a very tiny rule set. Mm-hmm. I then worked with that, and I, I picked my top three games that I've played at a convention. Why does it have to be light? You you are bringing it to the convention, you are carrying it to the convention. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you're not playing the game. You might be bringing it or or buying it and taking it away. Because (laughs) you don't really have a choice as to what you're going to play at the convention. I mean, that's usually just going to be whatever is there is there. Mm -hmm. But we're talking Uh about, for our listeners, what can you bring to the convention? You could bring Advanced It's not that big. You can't bring Mega Civ. It's huge. (laughs) (laughs) Go ahead, Byron. So I'm going to start with my number three, which is Seven Wonders Duel. Oh, wow. Mm, Two player game. Very often, very often you're at a convention with someone you know. You just want a nice light filler game to, while you wait for food. Seven Wonders Duel fits that spot. I love that because me and Elias played a lot of two-player games when we were at Origins last Yeah, time. when we were waiting for Mo and his wife yeah, to yeah. come. Yeah, we played like... We'd like, yeah, yeah. play Honshu and games yeah. like that. It was great. Yeah. 
Next up on my list is a game I really enjoyed playing at a convention was Paper Tales. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It can take a quite a quite a big number. I think five is what we played. We we played four. Four. So it's it's a good size and it's not a big box. I had a fun experience and that's my number two. You know AK bought but, it, right? I do. Yeah. He is a crafty fellow. <laughs> My my number one, it should come as no surprise because we all love this game, and it's The Mind. Woo-hoo. Oh, nice pick. Yeah, you guys obsessed over it. So you SN. mean you can play it during the night after the convention? <laughs> That's part of the you convention. You can play it whenever, and, it's, and there's no talking. <laughs> when you want your quiet time, you've got it. It's perfect. Well, I, I, I like your list a lot. Yeah, and me too. Thank you very much. The Brian. more you guys go on, the less my list is any good because there's a lot of... <laughs> okay, you go next. So you go, go next. next. Yeah. No, why don't you go ahead, Dima? Okay. Just keep ruining my list. So I'm going to start with my number three. Um, all my games were games I played at conventions and I really enjoyed playing with strangers. Um, some of these games I played several times when over the two days. So the first one is Rhino Hero. And yeah. I played it with Ryan Metzler. He's He was previously on the Dice Tower and currently of the Deep End podcast. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was cool. It was awesome. Because he came to the Haba booth. Yeah. And no one was there. <laughs> and he's like, can someone teach me this game? And we're like, yeah. <laughs> we can teach you this game. <laughs> so I taught Ryan Metzler this game, which thank you, because he's taught me so many games on the Dice Tower. <laughs> and he uh, taught, he played with Dima. And, uh, yeah, it was so much fun. Time. Yeah. So my number two is not alone. Oh, um, nice pick! Yeah, we like what we had a such game. a good time, and it's like you can play it with people you don't know, people you know, and it's just it's not very long, and it's just I loved it. And my number one is a game we played like fifty-two times. Every time the counter was empty, we went to try and get a play. <laughs> Wits and wagers. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so in all the chaos it's just I would pick like light games just because I don't want to get tired and overthink things at a convention and uh, so I picked like relatively but I think light Witch and Wizards contributes to the chaos <laughs> <laughs> great <laughs> so that, that way you blend in you know you get excited and true it's cool so those are my top three so Dima don't you agree that Wits and, w- Wits and Wages is better that it doesn't have a maintained ships action <laughs> oh, it was an inside joke. <laughs> it was also directly related to your civilization joke. Yes. Yeah. It's way better. <laughs> also, the only thing I know how to do in advanced civ is move. By the way, PS. Yeah, that's all I've been at doing. At some point, we have to so do it- something other than move and build cities. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> uh, okay, Elias, please <laughs> let us know what's your top three. Well, initially, it was going to be Two Rooms in a Boom, The Mind, and Rhino Hero. So uh, I, I, I quickly, very quickly, like instantly came up with a new list. Yeah, we didn't just cut out the last 10 minutes of the episode. <laughs> okay, so here's what I think about uh, stuff. So having been several conventions, in theory, it sounds amazing when you plan to play long games, like Advanced Civilization or whatever. But realistically, that ain't happening. I remember when we went to Origins, Mo had owned FIFA 1429, France 1429, for like two years at this point, and none of us had bothered to read the rules. So he's like, I'm going to take it there. We're going to go to the Ares Games booth. Was it Ares Games? No, Academy Games booth. And they're going to teach us the game, and then we'll play it. Obviously, that didn't happen. Nobody there knew how to play the game. Exactly. And uh, <laughs> we never played it. So the point is, every time I'm going to a convention, I make these great plans to play long games and it never happens um even at tts con i mean the longest game we played was like three four hours Mm -hmm. um so there's a couple of things you should say for me the criteria was either one um you play a game that takes advantage of the large group of people you have around you or you play games that can relax or center you because it's so like chaotic and you're trying to get a seat wherever you can and 
And lastly, it's important to take advantage of the stuff, the novelty that people bring to the convention, the spectacle, okay? So my number three is about that centering and relaxing yourself. And I thought, for me, the one game that really relaxed and centered me at Essen last year was a roll and write game. Because it's just you and your booklet, and even though there's a lot of noise happening around you, you can just sort of relax and I remember just being really relaxed when we played Railroad Inc. But I don't like Railroad Inc., so I'm going to pick Welcome To as my oh, okay, as my nice. number three. Nice pick. Um, I thought that was Detective for a second, but no. Uh, you could also pick Welcome. You also play Welcome To with an unlimited number of players. Yeah. So uh, with the same deck of cards. So I think Welcome To is a great choice. It's also something that's small. You can carry. You can take it back home. Play yeah. it at home. Number two takes advantage of the fact that there's a lot of people. So Grand Prix was a great pick, but what I'd like to play if I had a big group of people, or Two Rooms and a Boom was also a great choice. What I'd like to play is Panic on Wall Street. Oh, nice. It's also a game. It's also the fact that in the con, you don't have to worry too much about the noise. That's Because this is a game about trading and buying and selling uh, shares of stuff. And you're literally like shouting like you're on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And it's a great game, Panic on Wall Street, but we literally stopped playing it because our neighbors couldn't handle the screaming anymore. Uh, yeah. The same thing like uh, Captain Sonar, which is another good option, uh, or something like that, or Space Cadets, Dice Duel, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Captain Sonar came to my mind. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm. So, so that's what I would pick. I'd pick Captain, uh, Panic on Wall Street as my large group game. And my number one, which is the novelty aspect of being at a Drum game. roll. It's the giant version of any dexterity game that happens to be at the convention. <laughs> so, for example, when we were at Origins, they had a giant version of Flick 'em Up, right? Yeah. And when we were at Essen, they had a giant version of Tokyo Highway yeah. in Hall 1. Yes. So, when you get to play with those giant versions, nothing else is good enough afterwards. So, what you do is you play with the giant version and then you don't buy the regular size version because it'll never <laughs> live up to your memory. But I agree. This is not top three games to buy at a convention, it's top three games to play. to play. So, find the giant dexterity game and play that one. I agree. It's so much fun. Even if it's Settlers of Catan. No. I mean, they always have that at Gen Con, they have the giant Catan thing. No. <laughs> Giant and, and super Essen, random hero. Even at Essen, you remember they were giving those little tokens for Catan and people were trading with that each other. So it was great because so it was a good great. way to meet yes. friends and, oh, oh wow. I have three stone. I, I only need, you know, a wood and a sheep. So can you trade me this? So every everyone that was playing the game had a sticker on their badge that was said they were part of that Catan game. And then they were just trading stickers with each that other. Was it, was, so nice. it was great. It was we realized great. it in That's the third nice day idea. of the Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little too late. But that's my top three. Thank you for being patient so I could come up with a new Thank one. Thank you very much, guys. These top threes were amazing, I have to say. And you listeners, please let us know what your top three is on our Twitter account at TTS Sessions QA. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, TT Sessions QA or over at our BGG Guild. Both these links will be in the episode description. <sighs> Maybe Sadly, 12, 12 times the charm. I, 13th. This 14th is the 13th. times the charm. <laughs> I was not wrong. It, it's TTS Essions. It, it's TT Sessions. <laughs> or TTS Essions. You know, Essions. Tabletop Sessions. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of this Tabletop Session. Thank you so much for listening. Please check out our very active Instagram account at Tabletop Sessions. You can reach us through Twitter at TT Sessions QA. Or join the conversation over at our Board Game Geek Guild. And you can find the link to all of these in the episode description. I just said that. Please rate us on iTunes or on Apple Podcasts. <laughs> or rate us through your Android podcast app or choice or Stitcher or whatever it is you use. We're on all these platforms and it really, really helps us. So any rating, any review you can give us makes a world of difference for us. So if you could please just take the two minutes it takes to go on there hit the number of stars you think we deserve. We'd really appreciate that. We'll be back in three weeks. And until then, to quote one of my favorite writers, God damn it, you've got to be kind. Say bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Allora. Allora. Tabletop. 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 Tabletop.
Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to check out our sister podcast at storysmithspodcast.com. And until episode 14, we'd really appreciate if you could go and give this podcast a rating on iTunes or your podcast app of choice. Table, table, top. Table, table, top. Table, table, top. Session. <laughs> There's Ippo's Cupsy Hippo on it. So, it Elias, what is your top three? <laughs> <laughs> so, Elias, you tell us about your top three. I'm going to guess. Oh, I got, I, 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 think, got it. I got it. I got it. I think his I got, number got, three got. is Two Rooms in a Boom. Rhino Hero and. No, he's not the mind. The mind. <laughs> By yes. our powers combined. Okay, very good choice. Yeah, yeah, Elias' exactly. top three list. Thank you very much. We Let's... give you Elias' top three. That brings us to the okay. end of this table May discussion. I? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got my top three. <laughs> Thank you for listening.